Alfred Bernhard Nobel was a Swedish chemist, inventor, engineer, and businessman. He is known for inventing dynamite as well as having bequeathed his fortune to establish the Nobel Prize. He also made several important contributions to science, holding 355 patents in his lifetime. Nobel displayed an early aptitude for science and learning, particularly in chemistry and languages. He became fluent in six languages and filed his first patent at the age of 24. He embarked on many business ventures with his family, most notably owning the company Bofors, which was an iron and steel producer that he had developed into a major manufacturer of cannons and other armaments. Nobel's most famous invention, dynamite, was an explosive using nitroglycerin that was patented in 1867. Nobel was later inspired to donate his fortune to the Nobel Prize Institution, which would annually recognize those who conferred the greatest benefit to humankind. The synthetic element, noblium, was named after him, and his name and legacy also survives in companies such as Dynamid Nobel and Axo Nobel, which descend from mergers with companies he founded. Nobel was elected a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, which, pursuant to his will, would be responsible for choosing the Nobel laureates in physics and in chemistry. Personal Life Early Life and Education Alfred Nobel was born in Stockholm, Sweden on 21 October 1833. He was the third son of Emanuel Nobel, an inventor, an engineer, and Carolina Andriette Nobel. The couple married in 1827 and had eight children. The family was impoverished, and only Alfred and his three brothers survived beyond childhood. Through his father, Alfred Nobel was a descendant of the Swedish scientist Alaus Rudbeck, and in turn, the boy was interested in engineering, particularly explosives, learning the basic principles from his father at a young age. Alfred Nobel's interest in technology was inherited from his father, an alumnus of Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm. Following various business failures caused by the loss of some barges of building material, Emmanuel Nobel was forced into bankruptcy. Nobel's father moved to St. Petersburg, Russia, and grew successful there as a manufacturer of machine tools and explosives. He invented the veneer lathe and started work on the torpedo. In 1842, the family joined him in the city. Now prosperous, his parents were able to send Nobel to private tutors, and the boy excelled in his studies, particularly in chemistry and languages, achieving fluency in English, French, German, and Russian. For 18 months, from 1841 to 1842, Nobel went to the only school he ever attended as a child in Stockholm. Nobel gained proficiency in Swedish, French, Russian, English, German, and Italian. He also developed sufficient literary skill to write poetry in English. His nemesis is a prose tragedy in four acts about the Italian noblewoman Beatrice Sensei. It was printed while he was dying, but the entire stock was destroyed immediately after his death except for three copies, being regarded as scandalous and blasphemous. It was published in Sweden in 2003 and has been translated into Slovenian, French, Italian, and Spanish. Religion Nobel was Lutheran and regularly attended the Church of Sweden abroad during his Paris years, led by Pastor Nathan Serblom, who received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1930. He was an agnostic in youth and became an atheist later, in life, though he still donated generously to the church. Relationships Nobel traveled for much of his business life, maintaining companies in Europe and America while keeping a home in Paris from 1873 to 1891. He remained a solitary character, given to periods of depression. He remained unmarried, although his biographers note that he had at least three loves the first in Russia with a girl named Alexandra who rejected his proposal. In 1870, 
1906, Austro-Bohemian Countess Bertha Kinski became his secretary, but she left him after a brief stay to marry her previous lover, Baron Arthur Gundekar von Seppner. Her contact with Nobel was brief, yet she corresponded with him until his death in 1896 and probably influenced his decision to include a peace prize in his will. She was awarded the 1905 Nobel Peace Prize for her sincere peace activities. Nobel's longest-lasting relationship was with Sophie de Hesse from Selge, whom he met in 1876 in Baden, near Vienna, where she worked as an employee in a flower shop. The liaison lasted for 18 years. Residences in the years of 1865 to 1873, Alfred Nobel had his home in Krumel, that now lies in the municipality of Gstadt near Hamburg. He afterward moved to a house in the Avenue Malakoff in Paris that same year. In 1894, when he acquired Bofors Gulspang, the Björkborn Manor was included. He stayed at his manor house in Sweden during the summers. The manor house became his very last residence in Sweden and has after his death functioned as a museum. Alfred Nobel died on 10 December 1896 in San Remo, Italy at his very last residence, Villa Nobel overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. Scientific career As a young man, Nobel studied with chemist Nikolai Zinin then, in 1850, went to Paris to further the work. There he met Escanio Sobrero, who had invented nitroglycerin three years before. Sobrero strongly opposed the use of nitroglycerin because it was unpredictable, exploding when subjected to variable heat or pressure. But Nobel became interested in finding a way to control and use nitroglycerin as a commercially usable explosive it had much more power than gunpowder. In 1851, at age 18, he went to the United States for one year to study working for a short period under Swedish-American inventor John Erickson, who designed the American Civil War ironclad USS Monitor. Nobel filed his first patent, an English patent for a gas meter, in 1857, while his first Swedish patent, which he received in 1863, was on ways to prepare gunpowder. The family factory produced armaments for the Crimean War but had difficulty switching back to regular domestic production when the fighting ended and they filed for bankruptcy. In 1859, Nobel's father left his factory in the care of the second son Ludwig Nobel, who greatly improved the business. Nobel and his parents returned to Sweden from Russia, and Nobel devoted himself to the study of explosives and especially to the safe manufacture and use of nitroglycerin. Nobel invented a detonator in 1863 and in 1865 designed the blasting cap. On 3 September 1864, a shed used for preparation of nitroglycerin exploded at the factory in Helenborg, Stockholm, Sweden, killing five people, including Nobel's younger brother, Emil. Phased by the accident, Nobel founded the company Nitroglycerin AB in Winterbiken so that he could continue to work in a more isolated area. Nobel invented dynamite in 1867, a substance easier and safer to handle than the more unstable nitroglycerin. Dynamite was patented in the U.S. and the U.K. and was used extensively in mining and the building of transport networks internationally. In 1875, Nobel invented gelignite, more stable and powerful than dynamite, and in 1887, patented ballistite, a predecessor of cordite. Nobel was elected a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in 1884, the same institution that would later select laureates for two of the Nobel Prizes, and he received an honorary doctorate from Uppsala University in 1893. Nobel's brothers Ludwig and Robert founded the oil company Brownobel and became hugely rich in their own right. Nobel invested in these and amassed great wealth through the development of these new oil regions. It operated mainly in Baku, Azerbaijan, but also in Chalikin, Turkmenistan. 
During his life, Nobel was issued 355 patents internationally, and by his death, his business had established more than 90 armaments factories, despite his apparently pacifist character. Inventions Nobel found that when nitroglycerin was incorporated in an absorbent, inert substance like Kieselguhr, it became safer and more convenient to handle, and this mixture he patented in 1867 as dynamite. Nobel demonstrated his explosive for the first time that year at a quarry in Red Hill, Surrey, England. In order to help re-establish his name and improve the image of his business from the earlier controversies associated with dangerous explosives, Nobel had also considered naming the highly powerful substance Nobel's safety powder, but settled with dynamite instead, referring to the Greek word for power. Nobel later combined nitroglycerin with various nitrocellulose compounds, similar to collodion, but settled on a more efficient recipe combining another nitrate explosive and obtained a transparent, jelly-like substance, which was a more powerful explosive than dynamite. Gelignite, or blasting gelatin as it was named, was patented in 1876 and was followed by a host of similar combinations modified by the addition of potassium nitrate and various other substances. Gelignite was more stable, transportable, and conveniently formed to fit into bored holes like those used in drilling and mining than the previously used compounds. It was adopted as the standard technology for mining in the age of engineering, bringing Nobel a great amount of financial success, though at a cost to his health. An offshoot of this research resulted in Nobel's invention of ballistite, the precursor of many modern smokeless powder explosives and still used as a rocket propellant. Nobel Prize There is a well-known story about the origin of the Nobel Prize, although historians have been unable to verify it and some dismiss the story as a myth. In 1888, the death of his brother Ludwig supposedly caused several newspapers to publish obituaries of Alfred in error. One French newspaper condemned him for his invention of military explosives and many versions of the story dynamite is quoted, although this was mainly used for civilian applications and this is said to have brought about his decision to leave a better legacy after his death. The obituary stated and went on to say Dr. Alfred Nobel who became rich by finding ways to kill more people faster than ever before died yesterday. Nobel read the obituary and was appalled at the idea that he would be remembered in this way. His decision to posthumously donate the majority of his wealth to found the Nobel Prize has been credited to him wanting to leave behind a better legacy. However, it has been questioned whether or not the obituary in question actually existed. On 27 November 1895, at the Swedish-Norwegian club in Paris, Nobel signed his last will and testament and set aside the bulk of his estate to establish the Nobel Prizes to be awarded annually without distinction of nationality. After taxes and bequests to individuals, Nobel's will allocated 94% of his total assets, 31 million, 225,000 Swedish kroner to establish the five Nobel Prizes. This converted to 1,687,837 pounds sterling at the time. In 2012, the capital was worth around a CK 3.1 billion, which is almost twice the amount of the initial capital taking inflation into account. The first three of these prizes are awarded for eminence in physical science, in chemistry, and in medical science or physiology. The fourth is for literary work in an ideal direction, and the fifth prize is to be given to the person or society that renders the greatest service to the cause of international fraternity in the suppression or reduction of standing armies or in the establishment or furtherance of peace congresses. The formulation for the literary prize being given for a work in an ideal direction is cryptic and has caused much confusion. For many years, the Swedish Academy interpreted ideal as idealistic and used it as a reason not to give the prize to important but less romantic authors such as Henrik Ibsen and Leo Tolstoy. This interpretation has since been revised 
and the prize has been awarded to, for example, Dario Fo and Jose Saramago, who do not belong to the camp of literary idealism. There was room for interpretation by the bodies he had named for deciding on the physical sciences and chemistry prizes, given that he had not consulted them before making the will. In his one-page testament, he stipulated that the money go to discoveries or inventions in the physical sciences and to discoveries or improvements in chemistry. He had opened the door to technological awards, but had not left instructions on how to deal with the distinction between science and technology. Since the deciding bodies he had chosen were more concerned with the former, the prizes went to scientists more often than engineers, technicians, or other inventors. Sweden's central bank Sveriges Riksbank celebrated its 300th anniversary in 1968 by donating a large sum of money to the Nobel Foundation to be used to set up a sixth prize in the field of economics in honor of Alfred Nobel. In 2001, Alfred Nobel's great-great-nephew, Peter Nobel, asked the Bank of Sweden to differentiate its award to economists given in Alfred Nobel's memory from the five other awards. This request added to the controversy over whether the Bank of Sweden prize in economic sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel is actually a legitimate Nobel Prize. Death Nobel was accused of high treason against France for selling ballistite to Italy, so he moved from Paris to San Remo, Italy in 1891. On 10 December 1896, he suffered a stroke and was partially paralyzed to where he could speak only his native tongue. Nobel was surrounded by his paid servants at the time of his death, who did not speak his native tongue, so he wrote how sad it is to be without a friend who could whisper a consoling word and would one day gently close one's eyes. He had left most of his wealth in trust unbeknownst to his family in order to fund the Nobel Prize awards. He is buried in Nora Begravningsplatzen in Stockholm. Monuments and Legacy The monument to Alfred Nobel in St. Petersburg is located along the Balshaya Nevka River on Petrogradskaya Embankment. It was dedicated in 1991 to mark the 90th anniversary of the first Nobel Prize presentation. Diplomat Thomas Bertelman and Professor Arkady Milua were initiators of the creation of the monument. Professor Amelua has provided funds for the establishment of the monument. The abstract metal sculpture was designed by local artists Sergei Alipov and Pavel Shevchenko and appears to be an explosion or branches of a tree. Petrogradskaya Embankment is the street where Nobel's family lived until 1859. Criticism of Nobel focuses on his leading role in weapons manufacturing and sales, and some question his motives in creating his prizes, suggesting they are intended to improve his reputation. Rayloft. Knowledge as new power.